Suzuka was the site for Red Bull's second consecutive constructors title, but this time it was in a very different style. Max has enough points to be winning the constructors title on his own, while Checo, despite being second in the drivers championship, has shown the inconsistency that caused many to rule him out of a title challenge before the season even began. At Suzuka circuit, another desperate recovery drive ended in him retiring with the only positive being Red Bull's impressive knowledge of the rulebook. Today, we'll check out what happened to Sergio Perez in Japan and how Red Bull saved him from another painful weekend in Qatar. Let's get started. Despite the shock humbling that Red Bull suffered in Singapore, they were never really out of the fight. The final seven races of the season, alike phase two of their boss fight and Max Verstappen showed the pace necessary to win every single one of those races. He finished 19 seconds ahead of Lando Norris in second place, and the McLarens never looked like they could get any closer, despite their incredibly impressive development this season. They've really shown Mercedes, Ferrari, and Aston Martin how it should be done. Max has spearheaded this Red Bull team to one of the most dominant seasons we have ever seen. It isn't just the fact that they've won at every race but Singapore, it is the manner of the victories that is most impressive, the massive gaps to anyone behind him. If anyone thought Singapore was a sign of things to come, Max taking pole by six tenths of a second on Saturday shattered that illusion. But while Verstappen was out of sight at the front, his teammate Sergio Perez had been seven tenths of a second slower than him at the end of Q3. A gap big enough to fit the McLaren drivers Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris, plus the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, to relegate the second RB19 to fifth place. As the lights went out at Suzuka, Max did everything he needed to by getting into the first corner ahead of the two McLarens, allowing him to enjoy another easy Sunday drive. Behind him, though, things were not going well for his teammate. Perez was being passed by both Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, with Lewis Hamilton sniffing around his outside at the same time. With all four side by side, a pinch was inevitable. Perez held his car as straight as he could, but his front wheels were clipped by Leclerc and Hamilton. Somehow, the rock, the hard place, and the Red Bull driver didn't trigger a major crash, and all four successfully navigated the corner, but Perez had lost a large chunk of his front wing. Fortunately for Perez, a bigger incident behind him required the entrance of the safety car. Red Bull took a lap to gather data on the broken front wing, but the performance loss was too great for Sergio Perez to carry on and the team called him in at the end of the second lap for a new front wing. While Perez obeyed, his urgency to minimize his time loss meant he cut the safety car line before sixth place Fernando Alonso had passed it on track, an infraction that would earn him a five-second time penalty as a result. Overtaking under safety car conditions is a big no-no, not that Checo did it on purpose. This was a fringe case of the rules with one car on track and one heading into the pit lane, but rules are rules. It was a fringe case of the rules that Red Bull would use later to save Perez from a truly abysmal weekend. By lap 12, Checo had been informed by his race engineer that the five-second penalty was coming. The Red Bull driver knew he had to get a move on. Perhaps the additional pressure convinced him that there was a possibility to overtake the house of Kevin Magnussen at the hairpin. His desperation sent him into Magnussen's left rear at the apex, spinning him through 180 degrees and ruining the Danes' race. F. I have front wing damage again, Perez confessed on his radio, running off track at the spoon curve as if to prove his point. Magnussen, unsurprisingly, offered a largely negative review of Perez's move. Effing loser, man, he vented as he righted his car and continued, now down in 17th. Both pitted at the end of the lap, with Perez emerging with his third front wing over the first 70 kilometers of the race. Checo never recovered from the crash with K-Mag, though, and just a few laps later, he would retire from the race. His entire Sunday was like a reenactment of Monaco, an appalling performance that sent him into a spiral of poor form for months. He actually rear-ended the Haas in that race as well. Checo was rightfully handed a five-second penalty after he was retired by Red Bull for his unfathomably optimistic lunge on Kevin. It was an absolutely appalling performance from a driver who is giving Red Bull every reason they need to not renew his contract at the end of next season. What followed, though, was the most baffling part of his whole race. A whole 40 minutes after Sergio Perez had retired from the race, he was seen getting back in his car in the Red Bull pit box, ready to head back out on track. Perez emerged from the pit lane once again to complete one of the longest pit stops in Formula 1 history. After covering a lap, Perez pitted, served his 5-second time penalty and was released for another final tour, before his race eventually came to a complete end. When Perez first came into the pits to retire his car on lap 15, the team knew a 5-second penalty had been assessed. Perhaps they thought that, through it being already applied but not served, it would have been ticked off by Perez's retirement, 
rather than going forward into the next Grand Prix. Red Bull obviously worked out at some point that the penalty might not be simply forgotten, and having not served it in Japan, it could result in a grid place drop in Qatar. Hence why Checo re-emerged for two laps of shame, despite being 26 laps down on his race-leading teammate. Imagine if Perez's lunge on Magnussen had snapped his front-right suspension. It would have been the same offence, with largely the same outcome. Perez's Japanese GP ruined either way, Magnussen's too, but with an extra Qatar GP grid drop tacked on due to a technicality. Article 54.3 of the Sporting Regulations covers what penalties the stewards may impose on any driver involved in an incident. This is the regulation that allows 5 or 10 second penalties, drive throughs or stop goes. Section D of this reg contains a provision allowing the stewards to carry over a penalty if a driver cannot serve it in a race. This states that, if any of the four penalties above are imposed upon a driver, and that driver is unable to serve the penalty due to retirement from the sprint session or the race, the stewards may impose a grid penalty on the driver at his next race. It is important to note that this is an option for the stewards rather than an obligation. Usually, these penalties are not carried over, but Checo's re-entry was a precautionary measure from Red Bull to ensure it cannot happen. The regulations don't prevent a car that's been off the track for a long time rejoining the race. The only regulations that touch on that are the distance required to be a classified finisher, which is 90% of the race, plus the capacity to black and orange or black flag a car considered to be in an unsafe condition. Given 40 minutes, the team had obviously got on the car back into a state that it was safe to drive. Checo actually set his fastest first sector of the race after he re-emerged. The strange quirk of the rules was ingeniously used by Red Bull. In the grand scheme of things, this will mean nothing, unless you are probably the very upset Kevin Magnussen. But the fact that Checo will get away with nothing but a few penalty points on his license, which is a completely trivial system anyway, is ridiculous. The severity of penalties for drivers ending the race of others with bad or dangerous driving is something that needs to be discussed, because the punishments do not match the crimes. Red Bull boss Christian Horner said avoiding a penalty hangover was the only positive from Perez's disastrous Suzuka weekend. The only decent thing we managed to get out of today was not carrying a penalty through into the next race in Qatar. A fair assessment, I think you will agree. Ted Kravitz reported after the race that the FIA is keen to address the DNF restart loophole that Red Bull took advantage of. I can tell you that the FIA, after seeing this loophole, are minded to close it off quite quickly for the next race. That has been refuted by an FIA statement to the Daily Mirror, saying they're not going to be closing it anytime soon. To be fair, it isn't the loophole that is the problem, it is the punishment of the infringement that needs looking at. While the team may be appreciative to Checo for his contributions to the Constructors' Championship in public, the truth of the matter is clear for everyone to see. Former Red Bull driver Robert Dornbos told Zigo Sports, Max has 400 points alone, that's already more than Mercedes has as a team. I think Helmut Marco is completely done with Perez. He has had his good moments, but that was a long time ago. Now he's just causing damage and making a fool of himself. Another former F1 driver, Timo Glock, told Sky Deutschland, Perez no longer has a chance against Verstappen. Little by little, his limits are being shown to him. That's why he is so mentally down. Some of the mistakes he is making are incomprehensible given his experience. 2023 has been a disappointing season for Perez, who has had to sit by and watch Verstappen show him how to win a championship for the third year running. It seems that no matter what he tries, he just isn't on the same level as his teammate. Like Christian Horner said, Red Bull's use of the loophole that allowed Checo to rejoin the race was the only positive for one of the worst weekends of Sergio's Red Bull career. What did you think of Red Bull sending Sergio Perez back out? And what did you think of his weekend as a whole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.